Question 16. Explain the restrictions in ZBUL that comes while planning the networking topology. Answer. The restriction that is given while planning the networking topology is, on each instance the URL that is given for an object is pointing to one of the string that is defined by the object manager, OM. The virtual IP address and the port gets combined to give the complete URL for the semantic web search engine. The application consists of one VIP, virtual internet protocol, that can be shared using the multiple applications and allows it to be connected to different servers that provide tools to do load balancing together. The customer that is running the application uses different channels by using the concept of partitioning. Different VIPs are configured and multiple as well for a Zable application. The servers are partitioned according to the VIPs that are used and that are configured. The multiple IP address is not necessary to perform the job. Question 17. Explain the NetScaler one arm mode deployment model. Answer. NetScaler is deployed to provide high availability for the servers to allow the application to run on several platforms without being stuck. NetScaler one arm mode allows the integration of Zebul environment into any physical server that includes the changes for an existing server or the network. The infrastructure that is provided with it is highly transparent and allows easy features and tools to make an upgrade in it. Zebul applications doesn't require any requirement that will make them handle the load balancing. The servers are also called the load balancers where the network topology and the layout is being handled and deployed by the administrator to provide the correct information. Zebul administrator provides successful implementation of the TCP IP address and the DNS servers to communicate between the Zebul servers and virtual IPS that are configured through NetScaler. Question 18. What is the use of global policy expressions defined in Zebul? Answer. The global policy expression allows setting the condition that is allowed to enter the content using the NetScaler system. The expression is used to represent the conditions and allow the policies to be made according to it. The policy expression can be shared between many systems and the components. This policy expression includes compression, integrated caching that allows the saving of the data source that is being visited and to increase the performance saving saved in the cache. Policy expression uses content switching features to enable the services controlled by the policies that are made. The policy expression can be created using the configuration utility. This is the feature node that the system node uses of the NetScaler. System node includes the global repository that is used to provide the benefit of the system administrator's responsibility for the expressions. Question 19. What are the steps required to set the policy expression? Answer. There are steps to set up the policy expression in the system node as it includes the overall repository of the system and it is necessary to maintain the registry of the system. The system node uses the static caching of the system for that policies can be created. The steps those are required as follows. For the static caching the name of the policy expression gets created for the HTTP objects that need to be accessed and allowed to be controlled by the system node. The objects are like images consisting of GIF, JPG, PNG, etc. JavaScripts that are allowed to provide the interaction between the client and the server. CSS that gives the visual representation of the overall design and the system to make it visually more appealing. The name of the policy expressions are added to show the increased compression like JS and JS underscore content underscore type. Question 20. How is NetScaler static caching maintained? Answer. HTTP caching is maintained without the knowledge of any technique that is provided with the platform on which the Zebul gets installed. The services are made to transparent to allow the caching to be dynamic and there is a caching that takes place for both dynamic and static content. The dynamic content caching is saved as long as the program runs and the static content are saved till the user removes the cache from the browser. The examples of image files can be taken in this case that allow the static content to be cached by using NetScaler. The dynamic generation of the application content allow it not be cacheable as it allows more space and logic to store the dynamic content. The caching can be adjusted by changing the maximum size and header string and other changes can be done by going to the settings area. 
Question 21. What is the procedure to configure the static caching using the content group? Answer. The content group is used to cache the object used by the Netscaler. This cache is the integrated cache that is used as a member to show the association between the objects. The association or the communication is being performed when an object is downloaded or stored in the system in their specified locations. The association is being represented in the policy that results in the caching of the object in the system and allows it to be made available when next time the user comes. To configure the static cache using the content group use the Netscaler configuration utility by going to the navigation panel. Expanding the integrated cache node section. Select the sub node from the content group. Select the name of the node and select the image that need to be added. Select the image of the average size and add it. Question 22. What will happen after the content groups gets created? Answer. After selecting the memory and creating the group the memory setting gets completed and it creates a content group consisting of the images. The creation allows the content groups to be stored as static content objects. These objects use HTTP or HTTPS servers to initiate the caching policies that are being made for the servers. The policy is consisting of JavaScript, CSS, etc. It also allows the content group to be selected and used to provide other objects. The configuration utility is used in this case as well and also to expand the integrated caching node that allows objects to be called and passed to include more information. Question 23. How is server monitoring managed using the load balancing concept? Answer. Server monitoring is used before configuring the load balancing server. The monitor allows the monitoring of the health of the server and considers it at various levels of criticality stages. Netscaler server is used to check the health of the server periodically to check the maintenance of it. Necessary action takes place by checking the server responses a specified destination and taking the appropriate actions on them. Netscaler system uses uses a default TCP protocol to monitor automatically the server and its services that are created using the load balancing. Server monitoring is important to be used to allow the transaction between IP addresses can be seen and illegal activities can be blocked if any by the server itself. Question 24. How is Zebel server set up using the default TCP monitor? Answer. Zebel servers are easy to set up and it requires some default parameters that can be used by Netscaler. The Netscaler uses the default TCP monitor to view all the security and server health. The server health is important to watch to save it from any failure that might occur during the running of the system. The server checks the system and marks the services of the Zebel as up if all the services are functioning properly. The default parameters parameters that are provided become sufficient then the deployment will be based on the Zebel. The monitor is used to view the TCP address and the HTTP transmission of the data from one system to another system and allow only the verified data to transfer. Question 25. What is the process of configuring Zebel 8 Web Virtual Server? Answer. The process of configuring the Zebel 8 Web Virtual Server is as follows. Go to the navigation panel that is selected from the Netscaler configuration utility and then the load balancing node is expanded to incorporate new changes that is being made or to see the settings of the server. Select the virtual server sub node that allows the server to incorporate the changes that is being done and the load balance can be performed more efficiently. The performance of these increases due to this. Click Add to add the sub node. Write the name in the field mentioned with the Zebel service like name equals underscore HTTP underscore 80. The server field includes the IP address of the server that is given as IP address is 172.16.10.242. The protocol field consists of HTTP field using the pull down to let the user choose the port on which they want the field to be binded. To bind the services of Zebel to virtual server the activation of the services is to be done as this share the load from all the servers and allow the sharing of load to happen evenly. Question 26. How is session persistence used for Zebel? Answer. Session persistence is given when the Netscaler load balancer is used to select the specific server that directs the server to the client requests. The client can request anything that need not to be sent to the server that is physically located somewhere and the state information can be transferred from one client to another. The session persistence can be enabled by using the cookies that can be configured to insert an HTTP in client responses. The cookie is in 
inserted in the field of the header through which the HTTP response is given to the web browser. The web browser is used to accept the cookies that are included using the request of the client made to the server. The method or the persistence option is selected that shows the cookie that is inserted for the use. Question 27. What is the process to create the dynamic drill down? Answer. Dynamic drill down is a way that allows the drilling of the object through the single source that produce different views on certain conditions when applied gives the results according to the input that is given. The drill down objects are controlled and allowed to be put using a specific condition. The dynamic drill down is created as follows. Drill down uses the destination object types that define the conditions that need to be determined and the view provides the different destinations to define the child objects. The conditions can be expressed by using the resources taken from you by default. The parent drill down acts the default function that is to be given and certain actions that can be taken on the system. To create a dynamic drill down object it requires 1. Expansion of the applet objects type from the object explorer. It allows easy exploration of the object and uses it according to the requirements. 2. The opportunity list gets selected that is easy for an object list editor. Three. The applet that is generated on one applet then the user can pay for the rest so that it can be allowed to display the drill down operations. For the block is being defined and the block is being given. Question 28. What is the differences between static and dynamic drill downs? Answer. The static drill down has a configuration that allows the object with the definition to be identified using the hyperlink field that is given during the submission of the field and the view. The property setting allows the user to properly set the purpose of dynamic drilling and it is used to specify the column or control setting. Whereas dynamic drill down allow the objects to have destination has object definitions. Each of the point to the type field in components allows the business tools to be integrated and allow the destination object to specify the list. This is to specify list column or control that is given as hyperlink and allow many capabilities to be viewed when clicking on it. Whereas, the value in the dynamic drill down allow the bride to be sitting next to you that allows different views given for any further actions. Question 29. What is the difference between VBC and DBC in Zeebo? Answer. VBC stands for Virtual Business Component is a mechanism that is used in Zeebo to allow the data to provide an external system that can be viewed using the Zeebo application without replicating the fields and the data set that I have given already. Whereas, EBC stands for External Business Components and provide a way to add the resources that are accessed by the data. This data is not shown from our end only. VBC provides the detailed description of the account that are stored in the external database. It also allows the stored information to be transferred that allows easy retrieval of the policy that is external to the system. Whereas, EBC doesn't use the concept where there is no support given. EBCs support the relationship and the mobile user doesn't apply the same template. It allows the data to be transferred from one place to another. Whereas, VBCs are configured using the Zeeble tools like MQ series. Insert and update on the data. EBC allow the business object layer to be on the top and run on the Zeeble server, whereas, this is not allowed in the case of all the assignments that are passed together. Question 30. What is Zeeble Force Active? Answer. The Force Active setting of true indicates to the system that it must obtain data for the field every time the business component is accessed. Even if the field is not displayed in the current applet, this adds the field to the SQL query each time. 